This, this little thing here is called a Shishibo cube. Pretty cool. My friends over at Art of Play sent me a whole bunch of them. They come in a variety of different colors. Here's what's cool about them. Kind of like a fidget toy, I guess. You can create a whole bunch of shapes. Just have a lot of fun with them. So let's, let's open one up and I'll show you what I mean. Look at this. It starts coming apart. They're all magnets. Listen to the sound of that. How satisfying is that sound? And also the feeling, the feeling is very satisfying too. So you can make all these shapes. You can make it look like 3D cubes or I don't know. There's like 70 different shapes you can do. They've got an app that goes with it. Oh, oh, what the hell? See what I mean? Kind of cool. Shishibo cubes. I'll leave the link below. If you want a cool fidget toy, a little design toy that you can leave laying on your desk. Uh, that's just fun while you wait for something. You just try to come up with a different shape and it's like some desk art for you. Plus it's satisfying and it satisfies my ASMR needs. So Shishibo cubes, check them out, link below. Let's see what that looks like. Face up. Oh, not bad. Your card is lost. Mm. One more. Oof. Oof. Still needs work. All right, let's try something out. Say stop whatever you like. Right there, you got it. Remember that card, okay? Now in the action of handing the deck out to you or placing it on the table, I already know that the card you're thinking of is the Six of Diamonds. Pretty cool, right? That is a little peek that we're going to be looking at today. In fact, I'm gonna teach you three peaks that you can learn uh, very, very simply. These are things uh, any beginner, anybody interested in magic, just getting into it, wants to learn some strong magic. I mean, you can add your own presentation to this, whatever it may be, and, and you already have the information, so you're one step ahead. So without any further ado, let's take a look at what we're learning. So that was peak number one, which is probably my favorite. This is, uh, it's just so hands-off. You're here, you're, your head's turned away the entire time, and as you hand it out, you get a brief peak in, in an impossible moment, sort of an offbeat. Uh, peak number two is known as the bubble peak. All right, have a look at that card. I don't see what it is. Card gets lost into the deck. And now, as I just take a brief glance at the deck, I can tell you it's a six of spades. Next peak. This one I really like a lot because it not only allows you to get a peak, but it allows you to get a break, a very cool break, a very fair break that you can hand out to the spectator. And it looks kind of like this. So spectator will just uh, say stop right there. They look at the card. So let's say they look at that. Now in that motion, I can close everything up. I already know what the card is, but not only that, I can actually cut to the card or I can hand the deck out. They can shuffle the deck and I can then cut to the card and that's the two of diamonds, uh, two hearts rather. Uh, so those three peaks are really, really powerful. We're gonna get into how they work and how you can apply them to a routine and a magic trick of your choosing. Without any further ado, let's get it actually, more ado. Just got a text here. They said, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. So go do that now. All right, uh, peak number one. By the way, you probably noticed uh, this here. This is a line of first merch that we're coming out with in the next couple weeks, months. I don't know, not available yet, but I felt like wearing it. So a little bit of hype there. I got the NASA vibe going on. The first peak. Again, probably my favorite, probably the most practical of the bunch. Uh, this one's very fair, very hands-off. Actually, Peter McKinnon's favorite peak too. This is something he uses all the time as well. If you ever see Peter and he does this, you know what he's doing. Very, very simple. You're gonna hold the deck in just a normal dealer's grip, except your pinky's not gonna be underneath. It's gonna be here. So just, just hold the deck in your hand. If you're right-handed, I hold the deck in the left hand. If you're left-handed, you hold it. Probably won't work in this hand, actually. So keep it in this hand, because <laughs> if you're here, just say stop. Remember that card? <laughs> you can't see it. So this side, you're gonna wanna get just a little bevel going. As you can see here, there's like a little bevel. And you're going to legit run your finger down the side of the deck like this, okay? And at any given moment, they wanna say stop. They can say stop whenever they want. They can say it in any language, all right? Whatever they, whatever they choose. So they say stop, let's say they say stop here. Now you're gonna show that to him, you're gonna open it a bit more, just enough room for your pinky to get a break in there. You see that? So if I'm here, they have a look at it. I'm So I'm here, I'm opening up a little more, get my pinky in there, and then once they've seen it, I do this. And that's a bit of a convincer, uh, showing you that legit it's lost in there. So if you squeeze tight enough, it looks like there's no break, there's no anything. But I, indeed, I do have a break still with my pinky. 
Now in the action of turning this around and sort of handing it out or leaving it on the table, look what decided to pop out over here. The Jack of Hearts. I'll show that to you again, but I'll show you from the other side. They say stop whenever they want, right here. We open it a bit more, we get our pinky in there. Boom. Now it doesn't look like we have a break. Indeed, we have a, we have a break. And I'm just, in, with the same hand, my thumb's gonna get out of the way, it's gonna go under the deck. And my other fingers are gonna wrap around. And as I turn it, look at that. And I'm just gonna do that and hand it out or put it on the desk or whatever you want. Even in that moment, you can take, you can take a beat. So let's say they're here and they have a look at that card. Boom. All right, now at this point, I can relax. I have the break in my hand. I can relax. I can say, I want you to remember that card. I want you to really think of it. Here, can you actually hold the deck? Boom. At that point, I have, I have the peak right here. So it's a very natural movement as well uh, because if I were to put this on a desk somewhere, I wouldn't put it down like this. I would turn it over and put it on the desk and definitely take that extra second when, uh, when, they, when they have the card in mind. So they have the card, I open it a little bit wider. Close it up, pinky breaks under there. And here I can hold the deck normally like I normally would, keeping my break. And whenever I'm ready, whenever I'm ready, I can say, all right, I want you to think of the card very hard. I have no idea what your card is, which is absolutely true at this point. And then as soon as I, as soon as I do this and I hand it out, and you want that very quickly, uh, you can see uh, the, the peak will sort of bevel out of the rest of the deck. So that is peak number one, very powerful move. I uh, hope you guys practice that enough to get it smoothly because it is quite extraordinary. Okay, next uh, next peak. All right, so peak number two. So for this peak, very simple. I use this more of like a backup. If something goes wrong in a trick and, and I let's say I control a card at the top, I'm not exactly sure if I did it right or if I'm doing another trick and I need to check the position of a card. Um, all I do is use this. This is a bubble peak, very, very simple. Your, your thumb is going to press on the top corner of the deck here and push inwards. And as it pushes inwards, a little bubble's created and you can get a peak at the indice and the pips right here. So you can see that, probably not from your angle, but from my angle, I can see it perfectly fine. Now this is something obviously that has a discretion because if I'm here, I mean the spectator is gonna see that. So this is something you wanna just kinda do casually on an offbeat, boom, just like that. Just as you're playing with the deck, all right, I want you to think of your card and I'm gonna double check to see if my card's there, which it is, just sent me another text. Also check out First Dot Shop, link below random text I'm receiving this morning. So again, bubble peak, very simple. You push down with the thumb. Now it doesn't have to be there. It could just be there, just enough for you to see it, but it's gonna happen here. Because here, uh, you can't really see what's going on. Uh, and again, you don't wanna be like, you wanna control the card immediately and then be like, okay, your card is the, like that's fishy. Once you control the card, give it a beat. You know, play with the cards a little bit, chill out, and uh, whenever you're ready, just kind of get that peak. Boom, done. Next peak. Oops, oh, peak number three. This peak is uh, is a cool peak because it's like a two and one, which is which is really sweet. I rarely use it, but I thought I'd teach it, and you guys can uh, you guys can apply it to your own routines as you wish. Now you just tell them stop whenever they want. When they say stop, you pull out a card. Okay, so let's say it's the nine of hearts in this case. And what I'm doing in the back is I'm getting a peek at the nine of hearts without you seeing that, and I'm closing everything up. Now at this point, the spectator can shuffle, you can shuffle, you can do anything you want to this, to this deck, really. And then whenever you're ready, you can just cut and get back to the, uh, the nine of hearts. And I'll show you how that works. Very, very sneaky. You're gonna spread the cards, and whenever they say stop, again, you're going to, let's say it's this card here, you're gonna separate that a little bit. You're gonna say, remember this card here. Now as they look at it, your thumb, is going to bend the cards. You're gonna screw up your cards a little bit, but in that action, you're going to get a peek at this, right? So from the front, it doesn't look like you're doing anything. But from the back, you know, business in the front, party in the back. Three of diamonds, and that's your peek there. You're gonna close it up. Now, I've exaggerated it. You don't have to do it that much. So let's try that again without exaggeration this time. So they say stop whatever they want, boom. I've got that peak of the queen of diamonds. I'm gonna come back in now. See that little brief, that little break? That's all you need. If they shuffle, they can shuffle to their heart's desire, overhand or any, any other way they want. And whenever you're ready, oh, it actually went to the bottom. Let's shuffle it to the middle somewhere. 
whenever you're ready, you see you still see that brief. You don't even have to look at that. You can just you can just while talking, cut that and uh, it'll be either to the bottom or to the top wherever you want it. So very simple again, but very very efficient. Especially uh, this is kind of a two phase routine or three phase, however you want to do it. I'm going to give you an example of how to do this in a routine, maybe a multi phase routine. Uh, you're going to spread the cards. They're going to say stop. So let's say they say stop. You say Remember this card here, you got it? At this point, I have my peak. I've done the thing. I can shuffle. I can say, Lee, you wanna shuffle? Perfect. I take the cards back. Uh, I have no idea what your card is. Obviously, I know what his card is, but uh, he doesn't know that I know what his card is. So while we're talking, I can just you know casually cut the deck and I could say, actually, your card's kind of like a black card, isn't it, Lee? Yeah. It's kind of like a club, man. Actually, oh. here, think of the card and I want you to throw it to me on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Boom, there it is. So now not only have I read his mind, I've gotten some hits off of the reading, uh, but as well, I produced a visual moment for him and, and found his card. So all I did there, again, was I knew where the crimp was, where this little bend was, no matter where he shuffled it, there was always that space. So all you have to do in that case is just cut that to the top while you're talking, go for a little top palm here, and then uh, when you're ready, produce the card. Was the wrong card? It was the wrong card. So there you have it. That uh, that wraps it up for today. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thought I'd give you a little tutorial. You know, I haven't done tutorials in a long time. Uh, many reasons for that, one of which I felt a little uninspired with magic for the past couple months, if you couldn't already tell. Um, you know, I get a lot of comments of like, whoa, this is a puzzle channel now. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's a channel where I upload what I feel like uploading. Let's just put it that way. And I really enjoy puzzles. And obviously a lot of people enjoy them as well. So I'm not gonna stop uploading puzzles. However, from time to time, when I do feel like teaching something or showcasing something magic related, I will do that as well, but on my terms. I'm not going to fold to the online pressure of, you know, specific 14 year olds who are like, trick, trick or dislike. And, and you know what? You can, you can just check out right now because it's not what's, uh, it's not, it's not why I do this. So every, every so often I will, I, will, uh, I will bring someone on here to teach something or I'll teach something myself or we'll do magic reviews or whatever it may be. But again, it's when I feel like it because that's the only way, that's the only way I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing this. Otherwise I'll get tired of it or I'll get sick of it or you know, uh, mentally drained. So anyways, if you enjoyed this, uh, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you're new here and we'll see you on the next video. Awesome. Peace. Rock.